the new frontier in in deviance in cycling uh, we're told uh, most recently that, that to watch out for evidence of, of mechanical doping uh, I guess in its simplest form uh, cyclists can receive some type of uh, mechanical assistance by maybe hanging on to team cars often called the sticky bottle technique where a, a, a bottle might be handed from a, from a team car and they would just hold on to it a little bit extra and therefore be propelled up the road but uh, about six years ago we, we heard rumors of, of potential use of, of motorized uh, assistance in bicycle frames uh, and initially the, the response was to ignore it and, and, and cycle scene interviews had just laughed off the idea but uh, we have some evidence to suggest that it, that it does exist and it has ca it happened in sports uh, the the only confirmed case where uh, where an athlete has been caught by the uh, cycling authorities was it was a 19 year old uh, called Femke van Treske uh, who was at the European Cyclocross Championships uh, under 23s uh, Europeans uh, she, female athlete uh, was caught her bike was inspected it was found to have a motorized engine in there and uh, and she was she was fined significantly and banned uh, in an interview afterwards, she's claimed she knew nothing of it and, and that the bike had been tampered with and it wasn't down to her. Uh, but the rumours persist that it exists right up to the top level in sport. Uh, now let's think about performance enhancement in cycling in general. Cyclists, we understand, are, are, uh, are subject to a lot of rumours and, and speculation and the evidence suggests that, that many cyclists have used various different methods to try and cheat. This in itself is the one that perhaps has the has the least negative effect on the athlete themselves and, and I would think it's probably more tempting than taking some type of pharmacological aid. I guess the nearest parallel in, in to cycling uh, or to a system of, of oversight of, of any kind of uh, unfair advantage in, in terms of bike design uh, would be what happens in Formula One where, where uh, you know uh, race officials come and inspect the, the cars to make sure that no change has been uh, been made and a fairly detailed assessment within when where cars and, and, and motors are involved. Uh, within cycling, it's been a bit more ad hoc and a bit more of a reactive uh, approach. The uh, the speculation has been uh, abound since about two thousand and ten, but but regulations were only brought in in uh, two thousand and sixteen. The UCI, UCI uh, the, the International Federation of Cyclists, uh, have have started inspections as far back as 2010. Uh, the most recent version of their inspection has been a, an iPad app where they inspect the bike to try and flag up any existence of, of a motor. Now the motors themselves could take a, a couple of different forms and one wonders whether this app is is capable of flagging them all up. Certainly the, the suggestions from some people who, who know more about the, the motorized assistance than me that, that it's not sufficient to flag up, uh, for example, electromagnetic wheels or uh, or even some of the motors did without without heat traces or something like that. I I, I did hear something about this uh, situation where 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 you know that that one way to identify that the motors exist because they they could be relatively small, like the size of a cigar perhaps, gone down into a seat post or or or, uh, or across a, a bottom bracket of a bicycle. Uh, it, they do weigh a certain amount and, and one of the negative effects of putting an engine in is that your bike is, is heavier. Uh, the theory was is if you weighed the bike or some of its con component parts you could you could identify it. Certainly if you put electromagnetic uh, assistance within a wheel you could definitely tell how much a, a standard wheel weighs. <sighs> Cycling's gone through a tough time, uh, several tough times right back as far as the, the Festina scandal uh, in the era of Miguel Indurain and, and, and the problems with the uh, with the, the discovering of EPO and the Festina team and, and, and the stuff that went on with Willie Vogt and a few of the others. And then we had the whole Armstrong era, you know, the cycling seemed to recover and we had this amazing uh, Armstrong era recovery story and, and the guy who beat cancer and came back and was, was this multiple winning champion. And of course then we found out it was based on, on, on a period of cheating. Uh, we had a, an era, certainly in, in, in the UK, of, of renewed optimism for cycling. British cycling was doing better than ever before at the Olympics. Team Sky were untouchable. The first British winner in, in Bradley Wiggins. Uh, what I what I do know though is is that uh, this lends itself to, to the most wonderful of conspiracy theories in that we think that there are uh, pieces of, of of additional assistance going on in bikes that we can't. Yeah. See. Last year we were promised some some some. Uh, 
some really uh, tantalizing information from from a, a, a guy called Estevan Vargas uh, who sold himself as the inventor of the of the mechanical doping mechanism and he suggests that he was he was paid quite handsomely from people involved in, in the upper echelon the cycling teams to produce these motors uh, he has teased people via via various different pronouncements that he has information to suggest that that he knows more about this and people involved. Uh, although his evidence was was I think quite disappointing. It's got to the point now that if he has the information, we're almost ready for him to come out and say it. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're going to see much more on this in, in the next in the next year, but it does lend itself, like I said, to the most wonderful of speculation. And, and who knows?